Bone infection is uh, when either bacteria and very rarely fungus uh, infect the bone and cause a problem. Uh, it's not a particularly common problem. And the, the way that it presents itself, again, varies depending on the infecting organism. So for example, there are uh, bacteria that what we call are very virulent. That means that they have quite a rapid effect and they can cause quite a severe infection. And there are bacteria and uh, organisms that are much less uh, virulent. So they cause a very little bit of an infection that can take a very long time to present and the problems that you have are not quite so severe, um, certainly during the period of that infection. The most common symptoms of the bone infection fall into two broad categories. They're the symptoms that you feel systemically or you feel in yourself, and they can include things like feeling uh, temperature, feeling unwell. If something has been going on for a very long time, it can be associated with anemia and other problems. And then you can have local problems. So where the bone infection actually affects the limb, one of the most common bones to be affected is the shin bone or the tibia. So you can get local swelling, you can get redness, you can get pain. And if the infection actually bursts through the skin, you develop something called a sinus, where leaking of pus or body fluids through this area becomes a chronic, as in chronicity, with long-term. It becomes a long-term problem where you get leaking uh, from the wound. The um, diagnosis of bone infection um, requires lots of different bits of information. So some of the things that I've already described about the signs and the symptoms are important the history of what's happened. So you need to see your doctor. They will be asking you, you know, what's happened to your limb before? Have you had any surgery? Did you have a fracture? Did you have other illnesses? What other illnesses do you suffer with? So these are really important bits of information. The next thing is that you look at the area and you examine the area. We look at the skin. Is it swollen? Do you have a leaking sinus? Is there a scar there that suggests either a previous injury or previous surgery? We then do a number of blood tests. The blood tests that we do look at your general health something called the full blood count to see if you're anemic or not. We also look at something called the white cell count. The white cells are what responds to an infection. And certainly in the acute phase, in the very early phase, if you have a severe infection, these can be raised. We also look at something called inflammatory markers, which are um, very broad signs of the body reacting to a process of either infection or inflammation. We then look to do imaging studies, and these images are things like x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds, and some really specialist scans. So, for example, something called a white label nuclear scan or a PET CT. And these are, these are quite complex and specific ones to look for uh, exact location of infection and sometimes to be able to differentiate between whether this is an infection or some other condition. So the process of, of diagnosing it is, is quite convoluted. The next stage really to absolutely confirm it, we have to have something called biopsies. And that means as if it is deemed necessary for you to have an operation for the uh, possible infection is by taking deep samples from the site where we think the infection is and then analyzing this both under a microscope to look for things and also to look to culture the material to see if we grow any bacteria or if we grow any fungus. Then we can confirm that there is infection. So it is quite a process to go through to be able to confirm that there is bone infection. Bone infection and diabetes are, are quite um, a difficult combination of things to treat. One of the issues with diabetes is that 
individuals with diabetes are more susceptible to developing bone infection, either as a result of injury or as a result of surgery. The fact that the individual has diabetes makes the treatment more difficult because these individuals have uh, changes in their body, which means that treatments sometimes are not quite so effective. One of the main reasons for uh, amputations that do happen in diabetic individuals is because there have been ulcerations in the foot that have led to bone infections that have then become very difficult to treat. And then it has required an amputation to get rid of the infection. The other issue is that the presence of infection can cause problems with the control of diabetes. All of those with diabetes know when even when they have a cold or a cough, the control of their sugars becomes much more difficult. And this is the same with bone infection. So I suppose in individuals who have diabetes, bone infection can have much more severe consequences. And that is why being treated by someone who specializes in bone infection in those circumstances becomes quite important. The treatment of bone infection, much like its diagnosis, is a process. It invariably requires uh, surgery, particularly if the bone infection is established and chronic. And what I mean by chronic is that it's been there for a long time. Bacteria have uh, the ability to form a layer of slime that allows them to hide from our immune system and to hide from antibiotics that we give either in tablet form or through injections. So the treatment of bone infection, first of all, needs to make sure that we, we get the correct diagnosis. We treat all the other condition that the individual suffers, suffers from and control them as best as we can. So for example, in diabetes, making sure that they're well controlled, stopping smoking, stopping alcohol consumption, and then to think about what we do locally about that infection. And that requires the treatment of the soft tissues because invariably there are problems with the soft tissues in infection, treating the bone. And if there is either a, a fracture that is not healed or a fracture that is fresh, making sure that is appropriately stabilized so that the bone infection can go on to resolve. Occasionally, we have to remove segments of bone that are infected and have become necrotic or have died, have lost their blood supply as a result of the infection. That unfortunately leads to another set of issues that are created by the treatment of bone infection, but those are sometimes important to do in order to be able to eradicate the infection. Antibiotics do form a, a very important part of the treatment, but antibiotics alone in the established bone infection are not effective. So, so really much the same way as the diagnosis is a process, the treatment of osteomyelitis is also a process. It requires an orthopedic surgeon. It requires sometimes plastic surgeons that understand what to do with the soft tissue uh, problems associated with osteomyelitis. You need to also collaborate with a microbiologist that is a doctor who has a particular interest uh, in infectious diseases. We need to talk to radiologists to interpret some of the complex scans that I talked about earlier, because we need to understand them very accurately. And this team, this MDT, this multidisciplinary team is incredibly important in order to be able to successfully treat bone infection. 